Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD bodybuilder, back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about five of the biggest bulking mistakes. Now I'm sure that everyone on this channel is interested in putting on more muscle. So today we're going to be addressing some of the most common mistakes people make when it comes to bulking. My goal is to help you make your bodybuilding journey as efficient as possible. And that involves optimizing muscle growth, especially when you're bulking, because you're going to be spending most of your time in a bulking phase. I'll be going over these mistakes, which involve both training and diet. We'll talk about why they're a problem, and then we'll address how to fix them. These mistakes are common in both beginner and more experienced athletes, so you'll definitely want to keep listening. If you've been enjoying my content so far, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and let's get right into it. All right, now the first bulky mistake is gaining weight too quickly. This is something I think almost everyone has been guilty of when they've gone through that dreamer bulk phase, but let's talk about why this is a problem. It all hinges on the fact that there's a limited maximum rate of muscle gain that we can achieve as natural bodybuilders. That is, once you optimize muscle growth, there's only so much muscle you can put on per unit time. And any excess weight you gain beyond that maximum rate is just going to be fat. Now let's say you're okay with having a little bit of extra body fat on you. What's the problem with that then? The issue is that there's an optimal body fat percentage range that you want to be spending most of your time at for optimal muscle growth. And that range is somewhere around 8 to 15% for men or 18 to 25% for women. The other thing we need to consider is that when you gain weight, no matter how optimally you do it, some percentage of that is going to be fat, which means as you bulk over time, you're going to add fat and eventually you'll get to the upper limit of this ideal body fat percentage range. When you get to the top of that range, you're going to want to cut back down to the lower end of the range so that you can continue optimal bulking. We talked about this in depth in my lean bulking versus dirty bulking video, but basically the issue is that if you put on body fat too quickly, you're going to have to spend too much time cutting, time that would be better spent bulking and productively putting on muscle. So how quickly should you be gaining weight then? My current recommendations for optimal bulking rates are 1 to 1.5 percent of your body weight per month for beginners so people have been training for about one to two years and then 0.5 to 1 percent of your body weight per month for intermediates or more advanced athletes i'll let you sit down with a calculator and figure out what that means in terms of pounds of weight gain per week for you next bulky mistake we're going to talk about today you guess it is not gaining weight quickly enough now i know a lot of you out there are interested in body recomposition which is basically building muscle and losing fat at the same time now this is possible which we talked about in my body recomposition video but recomp only works for certain groups of people specifically there are three groups that apply to us as naturals and those are beginners people returning from a layoff from training and those who have suboptimal diet and training and then improve their programming. The basic principle behind recomposition is that it's a pretty difficult thing to achieve. So we need to be able to apply a novel and superior stimulus in order to achieve it. Now, I do think that body recomposition can be a good approach to take, especially as a beginner. However, at some point, it's going to provide slower progress and intermediates to advanced athletes will need a calorie surplus to really optimize that muscle growth. The other important thing to consider is that at some point you need to add weight if you're going to get bigger. This depends on your current body fat percentage that you're starting from. However, if you're six feet tall and 130 pounds, you're going to have to add some weight to put on size. Okay, so what's the solution to this? You should try a bulking cutting strategy for bodybuilding. This is especially something to consider if you've been recomping for a while and you're finding that your progress is stalling. Now for the bulking part, just use the optimal bulking rates that I just mentioned previously. But the other part is, is that you should learn how to lose fat. On one of the polls on my YouTube community tab, a lot of you said that you have actually never tried to execute a fat loss phase. It's important as a bodybuilder to know how to cut. And once you execute your first fat loss phase successfully, it gives you a lot of confidence in terms of being able to bulk and put on some size without worrying about getting fat and staying fat forever. I have lots of videos on fat loss, so lack of knowledge is not an excuse. All right, the next big mistake people make when it comes to bulking is not training for hypertrophy. The concept of specificity is very important to all sports and that is training in a targeted manner to achieve the result that you want. What that means is that if you do a lot of training for strength, calisthenics, or cardio, you won't produce ideal muscle growth. I'm not saying that these modalities don't work for muscle growth, and they actually can put on quite a bit of muscle, especially strength. In fact, strength athletes like powerlifters actually have a lot of muscle mass. However, if you compare them to bodybuilders, they just don't have as much. 
So how do we optimize our training for muscle growth? A few of the biggest things I think people need to work on are focusing on progressive overload. So that is making sure that each workout or at least each week, your training gets a little bit harder than it was before. This can mean adding sets, adding reps, or adding weight. I think that getting a logbook and tracking your sets, reps, and weight lifted throughout your workouts is gonna be really helpful for progressive overload because it'll give you an objective way to track your progress over time. Now the next big point here, which I think is one of the key defining features of hypertrophy training that's different from other forms of training is that you wanna prioritize training volume. I define training volume as sets times reps times weight lifted. You'll see here, for example, that this is why strength training isn't optimal for hypertrophy. If you do a lot of work in the one to five rep range, you're lifting a lot of weight, but you create a lot of fatigue for each rep that's performed, which eventually limits the amount of total volume that you can actually perform in a session or across a week. Another thing that actually follows from volume is that you want to vary your rep ranges. I do have a whole series on optimizing your training called Basics of Training, so check that out if you haven't. The fourth bulky mistake I see a lot of people making is having an unhealthy diet. This kind of stems from our first issue that was bulking too quickly, and often people get sloppy with their diet because they tell themselves that they just need to get these calories in, and it doesn't matter what they actually eat. Sustainability is really important when structuring your bodybuilding program, so I definitely think that you should be thinking about health when selecting foods for your meal plan. Just to jump into some quick recommendations, you should be trying to avoid trans fats and saturated fats. Trans fats being found in commercially baked goods and deep fried foods, for example, and saturated fats being in high fat dairy and red meat. So try to limit your intake of those kinds of foods. I would recommend limiting your red meat intake to maximum one serving per day. You should be trying to have the majority of your diet come from whole food sources. Basically think about how much processing that food took to get to your table and food that is more processed is likely going to be less ideal. Lastly, make sure you get enough fiber and micronutrients, so fruits and vegetables, of course. Now, I do understand that for a lot of bodybuilders, when they get to a certain point in a bulk, it's actually hard for them to get in enough calories, and this is why they turn to more unhealthy foods. The solution to this is to bulk at a slower rate, so a smaller surplus, and to schedule in a short cut if you feel that you're really tired of bulking. The last big bulky mistake we're gonna talk about today is not paying attention to macros. You'll hear a lot of people out there saying that all that matters is calories in versus calories out, but macros do matter, especially if your goal is to optimize muscle growth. So in terms of some hard numbers, here are my current recommendations for macro intake. My updated protein intake recommendation is 0.72 to 1.0 grams per pound of body weight per day. Once you set your protein intake, you can fill in the rest of your calories with carbs and fats in order to hit that calorie surplus that gives you your optimal rate of growth. In terms of the exact partitioning between carbs and fats, I don't think you need to be that rigid about this, but I would suggest a balanced approach between carbs and fats or a high carb approach where you deliberately try and drive up your carb intake and lower your fat intake. Now, how do we achieve these numbers? I would suggest that you try tracking macros. You don't need to be weighing out all of your foods for the rest of your life, but I would recommend tracking for at least a short period of time so that you get that understanding of what macros look like on the plate. The easiest way to do this is to estimate the portion sizes you're eating or actually weigh them out, and then look up the nutrition facts on the nutrition label or on Google. The other option is to use an app like MyFitnessPal. Once you do this for a while, you'll find yourself memorizing the numbers in terms of macros for your favorite foods, and you won't have to look things up as often. In fact, eventually you'll get to a point where you won't need to track at all, and you'll just be able to eyeball portions. If you watch my full day of eating videos, you'll see that I hit my macros intuitively without necessarily weighing things out all the time when I'm lean bulking. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so you'll definitely hear back from me. In particular, which of these bulky mistakes have you made in the past, and how did you get over them? Let me know below. If you're currently trying to bulk, check out my playlist on bulking tips, where I give you some really actionable strategies that you can apply to your bulking today. Bulking is a key part of bodybuilding, so I want to make sure you get it right. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And if you're getting value from my videos, make sure you share the channel with your friends so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.